Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel, it's Cynic Alex. And with this Black Order update, we're really in a unique situation because we've never seen four uniforms for four distinctly different characters all be amazing, regardless of whether they got uniforms and stayed the same typing, whether they got uniforms and became completely new characters after years of being garbage, whether they changed typings, whether they got transcended, whether they got tier three, really, no matter what, no matter which way you slice it, all four of these characters have glowed up in a major way. But I keep saying this question a lot, which which one of the Black Order is the best one? If you can only pick one, if you can only pick two, etc. So I don't, I'm not really going to answer that question today. I know you guys have that question. I can't answer that question yet because I haven't tested these characters enough. But what I can do and what I want to do and what I will do is compare them. I'm going to be comparing Supergiant and Proxima and I'm going to be comparing Corvus and Black Dwarf because more now than ever... Characters are being funneled into male and female, especially when they all line up in the same categories otherwise. So with the Black Order, they're all aliens. As you can see from over here, the ally is alien, and they're all villains. So they're all aliens, they're all villains, so they're not going to be able to do anything that requires humans or other types of tags, and they're not going to be, doing, be able to do anything hero-related. So it all has to be villain. And so because of that, they don't actually have a lot of... They actually have a lot of overlap in what in terms of what they're able to do but they're also distinctly good for specific things that increases their value like for example corvus is essentially the best speed villain in the game now so if you're really big into abx then you're gonna want to pick him up he basically moves to the top for you if that is something that you really enjoy on the flip side black dwarf is probably the best or the second best combat villain now um, not necessarily for ABX, but for basically any other content. So if that's something that interests you, Black Dwarf is the way to go. And then Super Giant and Proxima are going to overlap in a major way because they're both female and they're both universal villains. So they've got a lot there. As always, you have to consider, in addition to that, what your roster has and what your roster needs. So if you've got a lot of support characters and not many standalone DPSs, you're going to want to look towards a standard a standalone dps if you prefer pvp to pve you're going to look at different things if you need support characters proxima is the only support essentially right now besides a little bit from black dwarf but i actually want to bring black dwarf's uh, support buff up briefly because dwarf charge is not working it's not working in pve it's not working in pvp specifically the guard break immunity the immune to stun is definitely working but I've seen him get guard broke. He's gotten guard broken. I've gotten guard broken playing as Black Dwarf multiple times in PVE and PVP content. So the devs definitely need to look into that. But essentially, all, fo all four of these, besides Ebony Maw for now, uh, are going to bring something really important and unique to your roster. So, you know, you're not going to make a bad choice going for one or the other. But I'm, I want to try to compare them in a few higher tiers of Null. So you can see because they're all generally around the you know four to three and a half minute mark for null that is still a pretty big difference in my opinion some of them are actually able to clear null stage nine in one minute which is blazing fast some of them do it in a minute and a half that 30 seconds may not matter to you but we will see a much larger you know deep uh variance we're going to see that 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 30 seconds drift even even more when we go into higher level content so we're just going to go over the builds really quickly here we've got one odin's blessing on black dwarf We've got stage nine overdrive and we've got a CTP of energy on him now. I'm also doing this comparison now because I've given them all CTPs. Corvus also has a CTP of energy. Corvus has a stage 12 overdrive and he's got several. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven Odin's blessing. He's got the most Odin's blessings. Supergiant has zero Odin's blessings and she's got a stage 10 power of angry Hulk and she's got a CTP of judgment. None of them are reforged. They've all got mythic uniforms. And then last but not least, Proxima, the lone tier three. She has one Odin's blessing. She's got stage nine power of angry Hulk and she's got a CTP of energy. So very, very similar builds. The only real uh, one that drifts away from the rest is Corvus. He's a little bit more stacked. And I did this because I also, on the one hand, I really love Corvus and I really love physical damage types but also because uh, he is already number one for speed villain. You're still going to need other speed villains to cancel specific buffs that the Roar, uh, the Frost Beast Roar has. So Corvus, for example, lacks uh, burn, I believe. He has um, paralysis for sure. He's got paralysis here. And then I think he has silence on another one of his skills. 
but he does not have and does he not have silence oh he has silence there so yeah he has everything but burn unfortunately if he had burn it'd be way better but anyways they've all got similar builds now let's take them into some content and compare them keeping in mind that when i compare them now on higher stages i'm going to be comparing them in pairs because for null for example when you go up to stage 14 you have to use male type so i can't compare proxim or super Giant anyways and i can't compare them i can't compare any of them after 14 up to 20 because it's human and then after human it's hero male so yeah we're going to be comparing uh, corvus and cull on 14 and then we're actually going to be comparing super giant and proxima on 25 which is female so that's a you know that's a biggie but don't don't think of it the comparison as like 25 versus 14 think of the comparison as proxima versus super giant and corvus versus black dwarf with essentially identical team so here we go we have thanos lead buffing black dwarf plus black bolt if you're wondering why black bolt it's because he has a team up with both thanos corvus and uh call obsidian so that is going to uh, give you a bunch of extra passive buffs wow we did not dodge the uh the cage there now i've tested out his uh rotation both with a um with a ctp of energy and with an obelisk and you're absolutely right when he uh has a ctp of energy the chain hit from the third skill actually makes it better to proc on than uh procking on five so it's actually why we're doing uh all of this and cancel into three however when you don't have the sixth skill up there we go so that was a four that was a, a, a 40 second phase one super fast from call obsidian now let's see how corvus does what i was trying to say about uh the proc is that um when you don't have a ctp of energy it's better to just do six cancel four cancel five but then when you do have a ctp of energy because of all that chain hit then you're better off doing where is corvus then you're better off doing um th uh six cancel four cancel five cancel three now there is one more team up w with uh corvus here than than black dwarf has but it's just an extra crit damage crit rate they're already capped on that anyways so it's essentially the same but yeah the black bolt team up gives an extra five percent all attack so you're getting 41 percent all attack from this team males are going to struggle in general a little bit more because of the fact that they don't have any supports and in this case corvus is just a little has a little bit of a tighter rotation so it's kind of tough for him we went ahead and skipped the um the cage but that actually uh sort of made us skip a proc as well that's sort of the the price you pay to skip the clintar phase here He's doing pretty well, but as you can see, compared to Call Obsidian, he's already behind. We're going to have to take this stun here because we don't want to lose the Awakening. But yeah, he is considerably slower than uh, Black Dwarf when it comes to this first phase here. And so I don't want to I don't want to bore you guys or I don't want to do too much of a comparison here, like running it all the way through. They can both do this stage for sure. But as you can tell, he is well behind uh, Call Obsidian at this point. He's well behind his brother. I actually missed that proc. I'm just trying to finish him here as fast as possible. So instead of a 40 second phase one, we have a one, almost one minute and 10 seconds. So he's almost 30 seconds slower. He's almost half as fast. That's kind of bad. Again, you take it for what it is. Corvus is amazing. For ABX, he's going to, you know, Eclipse, uh, Mystique, Bullseye, Gwenum. He's going to dunk all of them. When it comes to this type of content, it seems like Black Dwarf is better. Not only does he have those additional support buffs in this, in the the guys, like in the, not the guys, any the, the the guard break immunity, right? Not only does he have that when it works, it doesn't work right now, but when it works, he'll have the guard break immunity, which will make him easier to play than Corvus. He has a better heal. He has a larger HP pool. He has accumulation on his base skills, not just his awakening. Corvus has more burst damage because of the accumulation on his awakening, but then that means his regular 1 to 5 skill does less damage. Black Dwarf's 1 to 5 does so much damage. And so, in a way, you actually see that mirrored. Interestingly enough, you see that mirrored in Proxima and Supergiant, whereas Supergiant's 1 to 5 does tons of damage. And Proxima doesn't really do that much damage on her 1 to 5 until you get to the tier 3. So that was sort of a mini comparison of Black Dwarf and Corvus. Like I said, in my opinion, 
Corvus is going to outperform Black Dwarf when it comes to things like ABX and possibly some lower level squad battle stuff, not Vibranium. But it does seem to me, and my opinion is, that Black Dwarf is going to outperform Corvus when it comes to World Boss Legend stuff. Now, that only holds up for Null. Because as you guys know, and this is why it's such a complicated comparison, Mephisto's a Blast type. Black Dwarf is not going to have a good time against a Blast type. He's losing 20, 30, 40% of his damage to type disadvantage. Whereas Corvus, because I have him rank 6, you know, max type enhancement, he's going to be dealing way more. Right? He's going to be dealing way more damage because of this. So Cor my Corvus can comfortably do stage 19 of Mephisto, which is very impressive. So this comparison matters for Null, but it also matters that you, that you, you know. So overall, you might say that Corvus is a little bit better than Black Dwarf because of the sort of flip-flop here on these two bosses. And then the fact that Black Dwarf doesn't hold up against Apocalypse as well in ABX, whereas Corvus does. But then you could also look at if the Guard Break Immunity passive works, then maybe Black Dwarf is better for PvP, but maybe not for Alliance Conquest because Corvus can revive. So, like, you know, you, you start to measure them, you start to, to move the abacuses on each side, and you're like, man, it's, it's 49 to 49, or it's 50 to 49. They're really, really close. So it really depends on what you need. Anyways, now let's jump up to a much higher stage. Again, we're just going to do the first... Uh, phase of the fight so you guys can see how their rotations work, run out, how their damage accumulation works and how much damage they take and how they can bounce back and how, of course, how fast they can do it. In this case, for Proxima, we are not going to build a, you know, completely equal team because in Proxima's case, she provides her own support that you can't really account for. So that is a benefit of playing as Proxima, but it's also something to acknowledge as uh, something that's going to make her damage maybe a little bit higher than Proxima's, or a bit higher than Super Giants, I should say, uh, at certain points. So we're going to proc here on the tier 3. We're going to dodge the first cage very nicely. We're going to do that. We're going to pop that. We're going to pop that. We're going to go back here. And we're going to pop off with the fourth skill. We're going to get knocked back, but it's no worries here. Oh, we actually wanted to... My, that was my mistake. I misplayed a little bit here. We were supposed to pop off on the um the tier three but we get the proc on the fourth skill which is really nice and we also get to proc oh we get to proc again on the tier three okay really nice we recovered well and we dodged both cages which is not something that i can say for uh super giant she's gonna have a much harder time dodging those those two cages here we sort of started the proc a little bit too early but we're sort of over it anyways. So there we go. So that was a minute and 50, let's call it a minute and 15 seconds. I made a little bit of a goof up. I think about a minute and 15 seconds is a fair amount of time for Proxima in that first phase. Keep in mind, this is gonna be a lot slower than Corvus and Cull because we've moved up nine stages. And unlike other world bosses for the world boss legends, even moving up a couple of stages really ramps up the difficulty, really ramps up the defenses, really ramps up the amount of HP that the boss has. Proxima, kind of a difficult rotation, but yeah, a minute 15 is pretty good, but there's basically no way to... It wouldn't really be fair, right? If I was going to compare Proxima and, and Supergiant and take away Mystique here, it's basically just giving an unfair advantage to Supergiant, because Supergiant doesn't have a support buff. So this is the best team for Supergiant. She takes advantage of Proxima's buff. She takes advantage of uh, Valkyrie's buff and Proxima's leadership. But if I were to do this and run Proxima, it's going to it's gonna give this unfair advantage to Supergiant. Proxima is just has that advantage because she's a leadership support and main DPS. She's all three rolled into one. She's Like I said, she's like Cyclops on steroids. So she can take advantage of three. Are you going to put three supports in one slot? Maybe you can. That allows you to push possibly to a higher stage with Proxima than you can with Supergiant because of the fact that you can triple dip on a support buff. This is the best case scenario for Supergiant. So we're going to jump into this now with the exact same strikers. Again, they both basically have maxed out ignore dodge anyway. So it's really, really good because Supergiant has 25% on her uniform. And then she gets 45 from Proxima and 30 from uh, Valkyrie. So it's really, really nice that they're all uh, set and balanced here. Now, what I want you to check out is how insane the damage is with Super Giant. We actually missed our proc a little bit. We missed our our uh, Judgment proc, but that's okay. Look at this lady work. So tanky, too. I actually want to start with five. 
because of the range on four and how she steps back. We let uh, two initiate our next uh, judgment proc. And then we just pop off there. We're going to take this stun because we can't avoid it. Pop off here. Very nice stuff. Boom. Oh, we got knocked back. So a bit, bit less smooth of a run here for Super Giant. But she's still holding up. No proc for the judgment. Okay. So there you go, a minute and 15. So essentially the same time for the two of them, but Super Giant, I mean, I think I can clean up her run a little bit more. Uh, I think she can she can actually go quite a bit faster than that. That was actually a bad run in my opinion. I think my very first proc was bad at the very, very beginning, but Super Giant actually does as much damage. I think she actually does more damage than Proxima. But remember, I had to drop an entire support in the form of Mystique. So if I were, able through you know dark magic to actually give super giant three supports she would go much faster than proxima and actually when i ran this on stream it's a combination of playing super giant really well and not playing proxima as well because she's a lot harder to play but proxima basically did stage 25 with a triple support with about 10 seconds left i actually ended up dying because she didn't ha quite have enough damage to finish off null before he finished off my team but there was about 10 seconds left so you know, nine times out of 10, you would finish him off just before he finishes you off. Super Giant finished with about a minute 30 left. And I have that proof on stream on Twitch. So I do want to highlight that, not trying to throw shade at Proxima, but just saying that although these two runs seem identical, I do think that Proxima's run was nearly perfect on my on my end. I dodged both of the cages, etc. Super Giant's run, I had to I had to get hit by one of the cages. I also think that some of the judgment procs were quite a bit late. But that just goes to show you that sometimes the runs just don't go the way you want them to go. So, you know, I'm not doing this to highlight or, or sort of emphasize one character over another. But if I did have to choose between the four and the way that they're compared to each other, especially if I'm focusing on World Boss Legend, I do think Black Dwarf and Super Giant take the cake over Corvus and Proxima, which is kind of funny because Corvus and Proxima are husband and wife. But uh, this is not the end of my testing. I'm going to do more testing. I'm going to test them on other game modes and other content and see really how they hold up. And I'll bring you guys more individualized content to really get into it with each one of these characters. But I am super do. I have to say, just as an aside, I'm super duper impressed with Proxima. I mean, with uh, Super Giant. She is so easy to play. She can definitely work with a proc if you don't have a judgment. And she hits like a truck. She really might be the dark horse of this update. So, yeah. Hit me up in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Take care.